Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Nicole Gitsky. Well, we start with breaking news. Three more officers who were at the scene when George Floyd died in police custody will now face charges in his death. Now, plus those charges for the officer Derek Chauvin have been upgraded to second degree murder. Chauvin was fired May 26 and initially charged with third degree murder and second degree manslaughter. He's accused of kneeling on Floyd's neck for more than eight minutes. The three other officers involved were also fired but were not immediately charged. Now, according to the Minnesota Attorney General, Former officers Thomas Lane, Jay King, and Toyu Tao will be charged with aiding and abetting second-degree murder. Well, for the fifth night in a row, demonstrators took to the streets of downtown Bakersfield protesting the death of George Floyd. At least 200 people marched in downtown Bakersfield in a solidarity walk. Members of the pro of the People's Baptist Church, who you may know as organizers of the annual MLK March, also took part in the rally. A second demonstration began with a moment of silence. It lasted 8 minutes and 46 seconds. That symbolizes the amount of time a Minneapolis police officer pressed his knee on George Floyd's neck. Before the protest began, Bakersfield Mayor Karen Goh met with some of the demonstrators and then she addressed the crowd. But I know that there have been injustices. I know that people have been hurt. I'm horrified and heartbroken as you are over the death of George Floyd. And our hearts go out to his family. We got nothing but love. Anybody who's not a racist, we got nothing but love. That's it. The Bakersfield Police Department said the o they only made two arrests, one person for speeding his car while the protest was happening, and another for having a vehicle that was reported stolen. Well, after speaking at a peaceful protest Sunday night, a Bakersfield woman found her car on fire, tagged with racial slurs the following evening. 17's Taylor Schaub has a story. 20-year-old Venetia Harris spent Tuesday afternoon trying to figure out what happened, as authorities are investigating this as a possible hate crime. Like dozens of other young African Americans, Venetia Harris went downtown Sunday evening to peacefully protest against police brutality. I had the megaphone. I was like saying chants, leading the crowd on. The high of that evening quickly diminished, however, as less than 24 hours later, the 20-year-old discovered her 2009 Chevy Impala was on fire. My immediate thought was to cry because it was my car. As the flames subsided, she shined her flashlight on the vehicle, discovering the message that was left. A handful of racial slurs keyed into her side door. And then that's when I was like, okay, maybe it's from the protest if they put and on my car. The chilling scene left Harris shaking, searching for answers. I've dealt with racism my whole life. I used to get bullied for being black, but the scary part was that they're actually damaging my stuff. Kern County Fire and Sheriff's Departments are jointly investigating the alleged arson. Lieutenant Joel Swanson says they're working to determine if this was race related. We're doing a joint investigation with them tied to a possible hate crime. But Harris says she has no doubt this was about her ethnicity. It is a hate crime and I'm used to it. And while she will continue to support the ongoing movements, Harris will refrain from going out for the safety of her and her family. I don't want to go outside and show my face and, and show what I'm driving in because I don't even know what happened? I don't know who it was. I don't know if they followed me. However, despite the dark day, she says she's never felt more connected to her community. With the help of like my whole community, they already got me past $3,000 for another car. I could get another car today. And my car got set on fire less than 24 hours ago. So that goes to speak for it. When people come together as one, we can make stuff happen. As of now, the Kern County Sheriff's Department says no potential suspects have been identified. If you would like to contribute to the GoFundMe, you can go to KGT.com and click on the hot link icon. In Southwest Bakersfield, Taylor Schaub, 17 News. 
Well, a number of elected officials and community leaders came together in a community forum to talk about these issues and what has been done to stop them. It was hosted by the Bakersfield Police Department. And the main topic discussed was the community's request for more transparency in police officer behavior records. The virtual discussion was open to 300 participants. BPD Police Chief Greg Terry opened the forum by expressing his feelings over George Floyd's death. Chief Terry is pledging for more transparency and communication from the department. You're going to be hearing from us more. You're going to be hearing from us in different ways and more of us involved in those communications out in the neighborhood. We haven't done uh, a good enough job informing our community of all the different things that we are doing. Most of the discussion focused around the call for action and policies that would address more transparency on bad police officers with a record of abuse. Panelists present requested that the department set up an external committee to overlook those records. Chief Terry agreed to look into it and ended the forum reiterating the change he will bring to the department. Only a handful of community questions were answered during that forum, and those present weren't able to ask any due to lack of time. But Chief Terry said those with questions can email them to the department and have them answered. Now that email is bpdcommunity at bakersfieldpd.us. Well, days of protests continue across the U.S. and here locally. People are frustrated and want to change. Here's more on what our local law enforcement is doing to help bridge the gap so many feel is too divided. Protests across the world demanding an end to racial inequality. But something is happening. Police and protesters are talking together, taking a stand as one majority of the people were out here to let their voice be heard about a very important issue, something that's causing them a lot of pain and concern. We welcome that. We welcome and protect the right of free speech, and we want people to be safe and be heard. Throughout this time and even before, Bakersfield Police Department has been working on bettering themselves to better our community. It's always been part of the conversation. It's always been part of that expectation that you show uh, you take accountability for yourself, you take accountability for the other officers around you, you make sure that this is not something that we allow to exist, we, it's not something we allow to be part of our culture here. And while they are standing against each other face to face, we are reminded that so many are feeling that same frustration. Let's not get distracted by the bad actions of a few. Let's look at the people who really cared who are out here about a good cause and uh, make themselves heard and let's make a difference. It's not something that will change overnight, but serves as a reminder of where we need to be heading. This is something that has been evolving through law enforcement for decades and will continue to as it needs to. Uh, as, as training techniques, everything needs to come on there, building those other relationships. All of these are something that has to take place uh, for us to enact real change. Um, and we're doing it hopefully within our department as well as uh, we're only one component of this. It has to be a change throughout the community, it has to be a change throughout our society in general. Uh, we're only one cog of this and we can't change everyone's way of thinking and way of doing things, but we can definitely uh, hold ourselves accountable for what we're doing and work towards uh, doing things better in the future. Well, now to the latest on the coronavirus here in Kern County. Public Health reports 42 new cases and one death. Now that brings our total to 2,428 people who've tested positive for COVID-19. 40 people have died from the virus. More than half of those victims were residents of local nursing homes. Over 1,500 people have recovered from COVID-19. More than 26,000 tests have come back negative, and 868 tests are still pending. Well, the watchdog may soon be named to watch over skilled nursing facilities in Kern County. That's what the Board of Supervisors discussed at its meeting yesterday. The goal is to make sure the facilities are being run properly as coronavirus cases rise. The COVID-19 ad hoc committee suggested that the board designate Georgian Armstrong for that role. Armstrong currently works as emergency services manager for the Kern County Fire Department. And the board is expected to approve Armstrong for the position at a future meeting. 
Well, families with babies on the way will have some much needed protection thanks to a donation. The Bakersfield West Rotary donated to Omni Family Health and Clinica Sierra Vista so both organizations could buy infant car seats for expecting families. The Rotary stepped in to help because the county's car seat safety program is on hold due to COVID-19. Omni says its 15 families have been picked to receive car seats on Thursday, plus diapers thanks to Community Action Partnership of Kern. And the mission at Kern County is helping local families by giving away free food. The mission is offering protein boxes full of meat and cheeses. Now, the nonprofit received enough for 3,500 families each week for the next four weeks thanks to the USDA's Farm to Families program. Today was their first food giveaway and people were lining up hours before. There's a great need in our community with the high unemployment rate that we have and, you know, the food insecurity that's transpired because of it. So, you know, we're part of this program and we're glad to be doing this. The mission says they are here to serve the community and have been since 1950. They say they want to continue to help everyone during this time of need. Now in your 17 Crime Watch, we're following an assault in Taft that has left a man with serious wounds. KCSO says they were called to Naylor Avenue at around 3.40 this morning. Deputies found a man who suffered major wounds. Now, according to KCSO, that man was a victim of a stabbing. He was rushed to Kern Medical. They say the victim is now in stable condition, but there is still no information about a suspect. In her 17 court watch, Caleb Kessinger the, was back in court today, but his trial date has been pushed back. You may remember he is charged with the murder of his then girlfriend's two year old son. Back in April 2018, Kessinger and his former girlfriend, Ailid Chavez, were arrested and suspected of killing two year old Raymond Angel Reyes Chavez. Now, police believe the pair dumped Raymond's body in the Kern River Canyon, then returned to bury it sometime later. Chavez took a plea deal in the case after leading police to the spot where her son's body was buried. She's expected to testify against Kessinger. Chavez told police she went out for dinner with a friend and left Raymond in Kessinger's care. When she got home, she claims that Raymond had injuries to his face and head and that the baby later died. Kessinger remains in custody, custody on over $1 million bail. Now he's expected back in court on August 3rd. Well, little girl from Bakersfield drowned while on vacation with her family. Her name was Layla Johnson. She was on vacation with her family in Oklahoma, where she went missing from a family gathering on Monday. Her body was discovered in a nearby lake early this morning. Law enforcement do not believe there was any foul play involved in her death. Johnson was living with her grandmother in Bakersfield at the time of her death. Her family is on their way back to California today. Well, it's a conversation most of the country has made it tough to ignore, understanding the Black Lives Matter movement and pushing the discussion of racism in America. As more time goes by, the louder the conversation gets. The Black Lives Matter movement has taken the nation by storm, thousands hoping to make a difference as the country grapples with division and a crisis centered around injustice. Jeffrey Sherrill, the pastor with Tristone Missionary Baptist Church says, Healing may take some time, but a willingness to listen is a good place to start. Let's just talk about injustice. Let's talk about what injustice means for the American culture. Uh, is injustice keeping people from being able to access the American dream? And I would certainly 100% wholly agree that ac um, access to the American dream is limited to people of color. It just is. And so that's a conversation that has to be had. Dr. Dwight Norman Jr., a licensed clinical psychologist in Bakersfield, says the long-term effects of systemic racism is one that many may never understand. Norman says finding a lasting solution starts with education. The education is very important. I believe conversations should be formulated like, hey, there are individuals out there that look very different than us. That doesn't make them any less than or any, any better than us. We're all equal. That dialogue could also be had with your children. Parents should address the fact that there shouldn't be division among peers based on race to begin with. It's another hot day out there once again. Kevin, when can we see a cool down? 
Well, getting into the weekend, we'll start to see that cool down again. So Mother Nature playing with us a little bit for today and tomorrow. Definitely going to be hot out there. We're already in the 90s. Bakersfield still holding on to that 91 with a west wind at 10 miles per hour. Humidity up a little bit at 32%, so also feeling a little humid. 84 in Delano, 90 out in Buttwillow, Taft at 93. We've got 81 in Fraser Park, 86 in Tehachapi, and 89 out of Lake Isabella. Almost at 100 for Ridgecrest. And you can see we've got mostly clear skies out there right now. And uh, even around the state, not much to show you on this Wednesday afternoon. The beaches today, well, they're going to be nice, mostly sunny, and temperatures will be in the upper 70s, 78 degrees and a light wind. And we've been tracking that area of low pressure that's been somewhat stationary now uh, near the Baja Peninsula. By Friday, it may steer a little bit of moisture out of the south, our direction, and so we'll be watching for that. But other uh, than uh, Friday's event that could possibly uh, pop up, we're just looking at some high clouds, and that's about it. As we take a look at our watches and warnings, we have a heat advisory for today from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. along with tomorrow because of the heat. I can't stress it enough. Avoid direct sunlight and take frequent breaks if you're going to be out in the heat. Drink lots of water and those that contain electrolytes and limit strenuous outdoor activities as much as you possibly can. Stay hydrated is the key. 102 in Bakersfield, 104 in Delano, 103 in Buttonwillow, 99 in Taft for the mountains in the Kern River Valley. Mostly sunny, 87 in Fraser Park. 88 in Tatch, being 90s for the Kern River Valley, 95 Lake Isabella, Kernville at 96, and then for the desert, 97 in Mojave, Ridgecrest at 104. Here's a look at the extended forecast tomorrow, 104, back into the 90s on Friday, and then for the weekend, we'll be in the 80s and Sunday 70s, so definitely cool down on the way. For the mountains, near 90 tomorrow, upper 70s for your Friday, 50s and 60s for the weekend under some breezy conditions, and then for the Kern River Valley, mid-90s through tomorrow, then mid-80s return by Friday, and again, all areas of Kern County have a 20% chance of a shower, maybe a thunderstorm developing, uh, and then for the weekend, you're also in the Kern River Valley going to cool down back into the 70s, and those uh, the cool down is also going to be short-lived because we see a rebound in temperatures as another ridge of high pressure builds back in right around next Tuesday. So, two days of triple-digit heat and then a pretty good cool-down for the weekend. Nicole? Thanks, Kevin, for that. I'm sure we're all looking forward to just getting a little bit cooler out there. Well, East Kern was shaken up by an earthquake last night. That quake was a magnitude 3.9. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, that quake struck 25 miles northwest of Barstow. That's also about 38 miles southeast of Ridgecrest at about 9.36 last night. But it's felt as far as Los Angeles, according to the agency's map. Now, it was originally reported as a magnitude 4, but it was downgraded.